All right. Let's roll. What's going on, man? Your boy, Mad Trucker Max. Up in this thing. You know what I'm saying? Today, we're going to talk about five things to ask a trucking company. Now, there's more than five things I'm sure you can ask, but I'm giving you five things that's very important to help you make a decision before you choose that trucking company. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I did, and I'm sure that's what you should be doing. You know what I mean? Because that was important to me, and these things I'm sure are gonna be important to you, okay? Now, five things in any order, one through five, one ain't more, well the money is always important. <laughs> but it's in any order, okay? So let's start with number one, okay? What's always important to me, and what's always important to anybody else, which can continue a phone call or get you click hung up on, is the money, okay? For me, money is always at the top of the Christmas tree. The star on the top of the tree, that's the money, all right? So yeah. It depends if you're going local. Depends on if you're going OTR. Okay, the money. Since per mile, percentage of pay, hourly. Important. Now, every company, of course, is going to have different pay way, pay wage, pay ranges. It all depends on how much. It all boils down to your experience. From a graduating student up until six months, up until a year, up until two, three years, and three to ten or and beyond. Those are all different pay scales. All different pay scales. You really want your first year, you can start making some decent money. You know what I mean? How much are you getting? at these companies some of these companies want recent take on recent grads they most of those type of companies ain't really paying that much like that uh, with the recent grads um, but if you know somebody it's always good to know somebody and network that can put you on the pay might be a little different but if you're a recent grad getting out of school you really ain't gonna make that much money as far as cents per mile um you, you just not you know you 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 you, you you're just not going to make that much money like that. Um, so the money is very important, man. You, and you got to do what your what do you feel you're worth? Coming into the game of trucking, you're not going to make that much money. You know what I mean? So your value as a trucker, they haven't seen what you what you got. They, they don't know anything about you. They, you don't have no history of trucking, so they're not going to just give you hell fifty cent right off the bat. No, that's not going to happen. You know, you're probably looking at more of a range of, hell, 33 to 40 cent. Some places may be under 44 cent. It just depends on where you go and what trucking company you go to, okay? Number two, benefits. Benefits, 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 okay? Health insurance, vision, dentistry, uh, vacations, sick pay, um, uh, those are, some companies offer great benefits. Others I've worked for, oh yeah, 401Ks. Uh, uh, what, what's it called? A company, uh, not, um, oh, I can't think of the word, man. Before, it has to do with 401Ks. But anyway, benefits. So some companies offer crap benefits. Some companies don't offer you benefits at all. Okay, the 1099 companies don't offer you any benefits. They just offer you usually a higher sense per mile. But if you have a family or if you have a, a health condition, such as me, I need the benefits. Benefits are, benefits are very important to me. You know, I had a former uh, uh, buddy of mine that I worked with and he took less money to get better benefits at the job that we was at. So he didn't mind making lesser money because he needed the benefits for his wife. His wife had RA, I, I think that's rheumatoid arthritis. Or I don't know what that means. I didn't get into detail with him. But he needed them benefits. He painted an arm and a leg to get those great benefits but took lesser pay. So that was important to him. 
You know, so you have to find out what's important to you and your family, what you need. You need to let that cater to what type of job you're going to go to because this is what you want. This is what you're working for. This is what you're working towards. You know what I'm saying? So money ain't always, you know, at the top of the tree for everybody. But for me, my trucker Max is all about the dollar. I got to have that dollar, man. If you if you if you ain't paying like if you ain't paying like you win, I ain't staying. You know what I mean? That's just simple. Period. You know what I mean? And that's where that job hobby come in at. You know, for some people because they're not getting paid the proper wage or they're they're not making that money at their job, man. So they choose to go somewhere else and hopefully their their situation will get better, man. So that's how that happened. Number three, home time, man. You know what I'm saying? Home time. How much do you want to be home? How much is that company allowing you to be home? What type of accounts does that company have to where do you have it? You have to ask what type of accounts that company has in your area. You know what I mean? If that company is four, five, six states away, it might be harder for you to come home every week, uh, every two weeks, every four weeks. Uh, some companies want you out for eight weeks. I know when I used to, I called Stevens back in the day, Stevens Transport, I think it's Stevens Transport, they want you out for like two months, you know what I'm saying, like they want you out there for a minute, you know, so that didn't fit me, that that wasn't going to work for me, I wanted to be home more often, um, but it's it's all about what you want, man, what, what fits you, you know what I'm saying, that wasn't for me, so ask about your home time, how often do you want to be home, man, you, to see your family and, you know, Maybe you don't want to be out weeks at a time. You know, some of us want to be home every day. Local trucking. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love a local trucker. You know what I'm saying? But I want to be home every day. Uh, you might even choose regional. Regional is usually out five days. Most of the time, you don't stay out like that. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Home time is very important. Number four, equipment, man. I'm a big equipment person. I'm not, I don't care for Peter Bills. I'm sure they're great trucks. I, I love Volvos, number one, and I love Freightliners. I've never been in a Kenworth. I've been in Internationals, but don't care for Internationals. I like Volvos. I like Volvos. I love Volvos, okay? But if a company does not offer you those type of trucks, are you not going to still take that job? You have to sacrifice. You're not always going to get what you want in trucking it just doesn't work that way you just gonna have to drive a Peterbilt or a truck you might not like okay as long as you're getting a paid a fair wage you just gonna have to deal with you know driving a truck that you might not like it might not be a new truck you might go somewhere where they got 2000 it's 2020 now you might go somewhere they got 2010s or 2012s you know what i'm saying but i don't deal with raggedy trucks i don't like raggedy trucks i don't like where you go places and they don't fix, I, I worked at a place where they didn't really fix the truck. Truck smoking, really, I had all type of, this was when I first started trucking. Matter of fact, my first trucking job. Ah, uh, Big Red, man, me and this truck right here, this truck right here, man, we was going through it, man. This was my make or break truck, meaning that I had issues in the beginning. This is the first trucking job I ever had. I had problems shifting gears. I had forgot how to shift gears. And if I didn't get it, I wasn't going to be a truck driver. They was going to let me go. And uh, a guy stuck it out with me, man. He helped me with this truck. I ended up getting my, you know, the training back as far as changing the gears. And I was rolling and I was on my way. But this truck right here... Man, you talking about smoking. You think Snoop Dogg be smoking. This truck, be, this truck was smoking and a few tires was bald and, you know, it had all type of DOT violations, man. But um, luckily I got through it and I'm here today because of Big Red. i never forget you, baby. Truck smoking like a mug. I'm telling them about it. You know, all type of DOT violations but I didn't know how severe DOT violations was, so me and other people just kept driving the truck. But it was, uh, man, if the, if the deal, uh, DOT officer saw us, man, we had all type of violations, man. So you don't want to go nowhere like that where they don't care about the equipment because, to me, that says a lot about their company. If they won't fix the trucks and invest in the trucks, then why in the hell would they invest in you as a driver? That says a lot. 
You know what I mean? So equipment is real big to me. You know what I mean? Ask if they got automatics or uh, manuals. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I love manuals. I can also, of course, do automatics. Uh, some of you guys got restrictions, so you need to ask, is this an automatic company or do they have manuals? You know, most of these bigger companies and companies in general are shipping, shifting to automatic trucks. Um, I think that's deading the trucking industry, getting away from manuals, which I don't like, okay? I like manuals, more control, you know what I mean? But that's just me. Everybody's different. So equipment is big, man. You don't want to work somewhere where it's old ass trucks, broke down trucks. Because when your truck broke down, what they say, if your wheels ain't turning, you ain't earning. You know, some companies got breakdown pay. That's part of benefits. But hell, you might your truck might be broke down the whole day or for days. So you're missing money. You know, you want to go somewhere where they care and take pride in their equipment. You know, I've been places where they do that. You know what I mean? They take care of their equipment right away. So that's very important, man. And number five, atmosphere or environment. You know, of course you don't know that company unless you've talked to other people about a company that they work for, from people either that work there or you heard things. They don't always go on what you hear from people. You know, a lot of people that talk about these companies are former employees who are bitter. Some people that are former employees are either cool with that company still or are they bitter you know but it's mainly the bitter people talk bad on these companies you have to experience these things for yourself swift get a bad rap and well really swift always get a knee on the neck you know what i mean they are people always talk about swift but if you never worked for swift how the hell would you know how bad swift is if you never worked for swift okay i heard from people that is some is bad but i've heard from other people that swift was a cool job so you have to experience that on your own. Read reviews, you know, of that company. Check their CSA score. I forgot the website that you can go to and check their CSA score. See the turnover, how many people are quitting and how many people they're hiring, how many violations do they have? You know, that's very important too. Check their CSA score, man. Uh, and environment, I, I walked off a job uh, last year, a new, a new employer I wanted to go to, and the environment was so dull it was just somewhere where I wasn't happy to go to work every day. And if this was going to be it, nah, I'm cool. You know, because I just didn't like the environment. I just didn't like the environment. And so that's big to me. That might not be big to you. But all those things are big to me, man. Dispatch. How are dispatch there? Um, How is the work environment in general? Are, are, you know what I mean? Like, do people try to help you? Um, if you need help and assist you in certain areas where you might need help, um, how are they about you calling off work if, you know, family matters or, you know, if you have an emergency, do they take care of you? How, how is the work atmosphere, man? You know what I mean? The, the environment. So to me, those are big things. So, you know, hopefully you make your decision based off those things and other things you might think of to ask the company. And I hope it work out for you.